What's the best way to technically approach a piece? I'm going to be answering that question using the Rock 3 as an example. One of the first questions that you should ask yourself is what are the more difficult sections of the piece? Uh, so for me, since I played this piece before, it was over two years ago, I'm playing it again in October, I am going to go back to the most difficult sections, which for me uh, lie in the third movement. So from the opening. Even when I'm practicing slowly, obviously you want to practice slowly. It's very important to have an idea of the piece. You want to have the musical idea first before you try to solve uh, the passage like a puzzle. Because otherwise the passage will dictate how the music sounds and you want the music to dictate how the passage sounds. For instance, if I don't really have an idea of how I want this to sound, it's very easy to just kind of play based on the shape of the hand. But that's very, you know, very what we call vertical. It's beat by beat by beat. Rather, I want dun, da dun, da 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 two hands on one spot because you want to be able to play it with one hand but it's easier to separate it at first just to get the sound that you're looking for from there you found this type of sound that you want you're going to want to kind of analyze the movements so first off I'm trying to sit straight in this repeated note A mistake that a lot of people make is they use way too much movement and motion. So if you're practicing slow, you might. But the problem with practicing this way is can you imagine me speeding it up to full speed with all that movement? It's, it's impossible. When you're playing a fast passage, you want to limit the amount of movement so that when you speed it up, uh, all those movements are very compact and economical. And that's another uh, point to make. Since I messed up on this part, I'm going to break it apart in the hands. I know that for some reason I usually struggle in this particular area. If you find yourself messing up in the same you know, few notes back to back like I just did there, you might want to play it both forwards and backwards. I've also taken the time to circle it in red because I know it's a spot that gives me trouble. Also, after doing a section like this, look at the other hand. And ask yourself, is it the same motion? Is it a different motion? In this case, it's a very different movement. So one thing I have to be careful of on these opening bars is making sure that while this is staying very close, my wrist is close like this, this one is actually moving in this general direction. Now along with economy of movement uh, for the sake of speed, you also want to make sure that in your slow practice you're not over exerting and pushing. So pushing comes when you're taking the finger and you're kind of forcing it downwards like this. Um, you never want to use too much energy because that's what can lead to injuries like carpal tunnel. All the energy we get comes from the arm and the body. 
and the weight behind it. You want to make sure that the loud moments are not uh, forced. So here would be like me playing it forced. Right, I'm forcing all the movement. And if I try to speed that up, it's gonna, it's gonna get really jumbled and fall apart. As opposed to me using weight and gravity. So when you speed it up, it all comes together in one unit. Here's another example of a place where economy and motion is important because it's very easy to get tired in these sections with chords and octaves. This is what you don't want to do. You don't want to use too much of this movement. Because while it works in this speed, if you're constantly doing this, um, again, you're, empl you're employing too much of the forearm muscles. These will get very sore and very tired. Uh, you want to use the larger muscle groups. So, Notice how I'm not doing too much bending from the wrist. It engages my tricep um, and my weight. Beyond that, I'm just doing little scratches with my fingers. When I have an accent, move upwards. So those accents, by moving up, uh, you get a fast motion. It's that velocity that carries the sound, not this. Right? That's what I see a lot of people doing. They get really uh, weighed down, really tired, and the speed starts to lag. Keep in mind that when you're talking about technique, it varies with the degree that your sound varies. So if you're playing Bach or if you're playing Scarlatti, uh, versus playing Debussy or Ravel. All of these have different sounds, and when you have a different sound, you want to create a different technique, a different physical approach to that sound. Now, what if you're playing a more lyrical section, not really focused on speed? A lot of the exact things that I was talking about don't really apply in this context because we're not trying to go for economy of movement when it comes to speed. You have this time to ebb and flow. So if anything, I'm, I'm sort of exaggerating these movements, exaggerating the lifting of my fingers like when I want this note. I'm looking for that. So rather than staying too close, trying to get the momentum going into these notes and bring out the melody lines because you have you know the duet of the upper melody and the lower melody beyond that what I'm trying to do is to create a legato flow so these ones as connected and as smooth as possible uh, in this particular section using a lot of pedal. I've talked so much about fingering, it almost seems uh, ridiculous to bring it up again, but I have to bring it up again because it's one of the most important things. Once you have the sound established, you really want to make sure you have a fingering that is consistent, one that you can stick with, because if you don't write it down, you run the risk of practicing it differently each time. And when you practice it differently each time, 
it takes you way longer to learn because your brain is getting confused. Wait, is this one, two, three, two? Or is it one, two, four, three? Or is it one, two, four, one? Having those repetitions helps you learn it faster. So anyways, those are just a few tips on how to approach a piece technically. Hopefully you find this helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you guys on the next video.